Hey, Larry. Um, good to see you as always. But you, um, you had basically a five-man rotation in, uh, at defensive end last year. You talked about how you felt like you had five starters at D-end. Is it the same deal this year? Do you feel like you have five starters? Let's kind of break down what you're seeing at defensive end uh, well, so far. You know, we, you know, we lost Tyler Friday right now, and that's making it tough. So I thought we had four ends returning. Uh, Tyler Reek, Tyree, Tyree, and Zach, and then Javante Baptiste. Those are the four guys who really count on being the guys who lead it. And then you've got to grab a couple young guys uh, to develop to be a part of that fifth unit. So we're, we're, we're not there yet. We're still in the development stage of that. How close are Jack and JT to, to perhaps being in the rotation? Are they pretty far off? Uh, you know, it's just still a learning process. You know, I mean, it really is. You get to go play college football and be ready to play in the first game, and big time game. There's, there's some growing pains they have to go through. They're working at it. I'm really, I'm really happy where they are right now in terms of where their work is. Uh, the great work have is a great student of the game. So it's time. It's going to take time. Just one more from me. Um, defensive tackle. Can you, can you break down what you're seeing at defensive tackle with? First team, second team, third team. But we're not quite there yet. You know, we got some guys inside. Antoine Jackson, you know, we got a hassle with Garrett. And then uh, Teron Vince has really had a great camp. And then Jerron Cage is there. So you got four solid guys there. And then uh, I like the young guys. I like Talik. I like uh, Mike Hall is starting to make a push. You know, we got Noah Potter as a guy there. So we got some guys that we can hopefully plug in as we go forward. Hey, you've seen uh, JT before a little bit, but you can see him on the practice field and work and stuff. What just stands out about him so far? I think one thing about him, he came in, he came in town in great shape. And you don't come in and start and get where he's going on the in great shape. So that, he did a great job of doing that. He's got a really high football IQ. And so he really understands the football game. And he's a video guy. He's a, he's a study guy. And I think that's why he's starting to advance so fast because he's got some things that you have to have. You want to be an elite player. Uh, but his work ethic is off the track. When you say how to pass the air to your left. Explain to people what you're talking about there. He knows he has a sense for what's in, happening in front of him. Foot, I mean, yeah, football IQ, understanding information, understanding what you're doing, what you see, and, and just kind of understanding the game, you know what I mean? And I think that's where he has a huge advantage. His grandpa was a great coach, a high school coach, and I think that helped him uh, because he would take him to the game to see the game, understand the game. And that he's got a great vision for him. Well, what's what's realistic, do you think, for him? I mean, he obviously came in very late. Can he make an impact? <laughs> and, and if so, how quickly? I, I, I hope he can. I mean, he certainly had the tools to do that. Uh, right now, it's how fast you can learn, how defense, moving forward, playing this game, and then playing at a fast pace. And people don't understand that when you come from high school, it's not as fast as they think it is until you hit the college campus. And now getting them up to speed, he's certainly working on it. Can you discuss how he and, and uh, Jack can complement <coughs> each other, how they're maybe not quite the same player, and that might be a good thing? It is a good thing. Uh, Jack is a you know quick, very explosive player. Uh, JT is just the opposite, explosive, quick, and powerful. He can play on top of you know, Ann and the six technique and, and knock the line of scrimmage back. So he's very poly. He's got great lower body strength. Uh, Jack is a finesse guy. He, he, he will find a way to beat you. And he's a highly competitive guy. So that's what I like about Boca. Did those guys be in the freshman package this year? Not yet. We haven't decided what we're going to do yet you know, and how we're going to handle that package. And we got some inside guys that can rush, but uh, we haven't gotten any. Minnesota's not going to allow us to get in the rushman package. So we, we got to stop the run first. Yeah. When you have guys like that, though, like, is it hard not to dream about the possibilities of what you can do if Zach and Tyreek and Jack and JT all on the field together? Oh, no doubt. It's a nice dream, but it's one day at a time. It's one day at a time. you got to get them to the bus, got to stay healthy, and it's a process to get that done. So, uh, and matter of fact, Tariq and, and Javante and Zach have really have a great camp, really great camp. And those guys are my leaders now. They're, they're set the pace for those young guys, and that's what you want. Larry, do you have any idea if you could get Tyler back at some point this year, or what does that loss mean? I, I don't know. We don't know yet. You know, it's a big loss. I mean, really a big loss. He was having a great winter, great summer, and right where we wanted to be to make a push. And it's just, it's just sad. And he's a great leader too. So we're you know, going to wait and see what happens down the road. Seen him still like, you know, looks like he's a coach out there for you. He is. So we, uh, he's JT big brother. So we put him in charge of JT and make sure that he get him coached up as we go. That's been going really well. Really well. You've had a lot of guys like Chase Young and Mabosa who have come in here and have been really highly touted guys. Kind of how did Jack and JT compare coming in in terms of how prepared they are for the college level? I think they're well prepared. I mean, they're good athletes. And you know, just like all those great players, I tell people all the time it's a process. It just doesn't happen overnight. I mean, you have to go through things every day. Everything JT and Jack are doing are learning for the first time. And that's going to take time to figure out that process to be really good the players. So I think that, you know, you just got to hold tight and watch and see how they develop as we go forward. Yeah. 
Uh, not quite ready. He got in here. He's brought about 225 with 230. He walked in the door. He's brought 255 now, so he's been almost 30 pounds of just muscle mass since he's been here. So it's been a transition. He didn't play football, and I mean, so he wasn't as strong when he came in. But over summer, you know, I mean, Coach Mick did his staff a great job getting ready. I mean, he, he's 255 right now. Look really good. But that's the work he's put into it. Are there worries when that happens? I mean, I don't. I mean, it didn't happen that often. I mean, he didn't play football, yeah. and we're sitting here all talking about him like he's supposed to be the best yeah. player. This I mean, expectations are very high because he's a local guy, but I think he still has to go on the field and play. He has not played football almost in you know, a year and a half now, and spring football doesn't really count. It's just a fundamental thing. So we've got to wait and see how he develops as we go forward. We've got, what, 15, 16 more days before the first game. So we get, now we start pushing to see what happens. Anything else for Coach? Yeah, go ahead. What is it like going through a camp and then trying to get a defensive line ready when you're playing Minnesota week one? Well, I tell you what, help us right now. Our offensive line, you know, iron sharp and iron, and they're as big as Minnesota, so that's helping us right now. And then we got some elite running backs, so that helps us when we go against each other. So I think we're getting ready to prepare for them because our offensive line is so huge and very talented, and so it's going to get us ready for it. And, and that's a bonus for us to have that kind of height and weight that we can go against that Minnesota has. You watch video, you can't not, you can't miss Juwan Jones running out. Just, from your vantage point, what kind of strides is he made? He, he, 360, he's really turning himself to a really great football player. He's on his way. He's very attentive, he's very powerful, very strong. He's got in a great shape. And so Dewan is having a great game. He's hard to run around, he's just so long and big. But it helped us because we're going to face that the first game. Just that defensive tackle spot with Pascal and Tehran, do you feel like you can get those guys on the field at the same time, or do you like them both better at that free tech spot? Uh, we're, we're training to, be, to have guys to play both positions. And now instead of having two players, you're getting four players. So both guys can play nose, both guys can play three tech. So that gives us some more depth, and that's what we're trying to do. We'll train other guys like that <coughs> because they're veteran players. They can probably handle the playbook. Uh, and so far, they've done really good. And Teron the same way. Teron can play three tech and nose guard for one or two. What are the different things they have to learn to be able to play nose guard when they've been a three tech? It's different. You know, three technique gets more one on one in a pass rush. He probably get more double teams than a nose guard will. A nose guard gets some combo blocks. He's got to be more of an athletic guy that can off block. But it's a different position. Yeah. Haskell had such a great season last year. Larry, did you see that coming with Haskell Garrett uh, entering last year? And what's he done to get even better entering this year? Now, the biggest thing, you know, just staying healthy is the biggest thing, you know, just staying healthy going forward. Uh, he's in a good space right now. And it will be a He'll be a marked guy going into the season. Team's not going to know who he is. And you know, try to get more double teams as we go forward. But I'm really happy where he's in right now. He got some All-American accolades last year. Like I said, were you, did, did that – I'm sure you were high on him, but did that take you by surprise how well he played last year? I think he came back with some resilience. I think he came back and really went to work. After what happened to him, I think he really refocused himself and really concentrated on being a real great football player. And that's the way he practiced, and that's the way he played. You know what I mean? So it's kind of neat to see him do that. I mean, he's really a smart player. But he gets to understand how to play the game. In the spring, the buzz, the buzz was exact. It stepped up his game. Uh, have you have you seen that continue in preseason? I mean, just what what's different about him from a year ago from your management? Well, you know, as you know, you know, the more you play, confident you become. He's more confident right now. Uh, he's playing much faster at a pace that we like to play at. Uh, his leadership is off the charts right now. Uh, but he put the work in. He's 270. You know, he probably played last year around 255. And so he's a bigger, stronger guy going into going into his junior year. So we kind of like where he's at right now. Also, guys have a lot of good things to say about Zach Hamilton. Can he continue to develop? Can he be a part of the Oh, no question about it. Ty's got a chance to be special for us. He's uh, up to 290 right now, and that's where we want him to play at the position. And he's one of the guys who's trained to play nose guard and three tech because you never know when you go on the road what you're going to have to have. And so, but I'm really pleased where he's at right now. I really am. One last recruiting question. I mean, JT, that's probably the most unique recruit that you've ever had. And now you've got to kind of press the reset button and focus on the 2022 class. I mean, can you just kind of walk us through kind of having to press that reset button? Yeah, you know, it's been, a, it's been a year and a half recruiting JT, and every day, every hour, just staying focused, staying with the family. And now we have to, uh, you know, get some 2022 guys in here. You know, we got a group of guys that really like. 
going forward. Like most kids, they're going to take their time, make the decision. So we're not pressing, but we think we are in good shape with all those guys, and we'll see what happens. Did that help you with your patience, having to wait on, on that? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not fun now. <laughs> you know, patience is good, but it's not fun waiting and for that last hour, you know, waiting for that last phone call. Larry, you mentioned Aspen, Aspen, Tyron is kind of going for free tech and Asper's done a little bit of it when he first came to sophomore. We had him at nose guard, uh, but he's so uh, smart he can handle both positions very well. And so we're gonna we're gonna play around with him. So that is. Oh no, just you know, it's it's two different positions. There's two different techniques in every blitz that we do. So he has to know exactly what the nose guard does and the three technique does. And so. Uh, but we make the guys learn a whole playbook, not their position, so that helps us. So he's in a meeting room, not learning just what he does, but everybody in the defense system. So that's kind of helped us. Larry, how did you know that Javante could put on all this weight? Yeah. I'd say he worked hard at it, though. It wasn't easy for him. He came here at 209 pounds, I think, and not probably less than that. <coughs> but he was so driven. Uh, and now he's at 255 and, and playing really well. I and mean, I can't say it again. Tariq and Zach and Javante has had really great games. Really, uh, their leadership's off the charts. Did you, I mean, when did you see that really come in, the leadership part? Or the I saw the end of spring football. You saw him trying to, try to step the stride, step up. He spent more time in the video room studying the game. And that, that's a sign of a guy really understand what he's got to do to get to the next level. And so I kind of like where Devontae is right now. He, he's going to get player for us. When you got that phone call from from uh, Ray Taylor, uh, I, I saw you anguish one time when you got a bad phone call. You know, a long time ago, stuff. I think it was a, a nose guy, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what, what is it like for a coach to, to win that battle? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I was actually out in the yard cutting grass, and I got a text and say, hey, coach, I'm going to call you in about 20 minutes. So then I stood up on the steps and, and waited like a little kid, like, okay, I'll wait for this phone call. <laughs> and he got on the phone. He's a coach. Uh, you know, I got a minute. I said, yeah, what's up? And it, 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 to me, it's that one line is, well, coach, we made our mind up, and, uh, and we decided what we're going to do. I'm about ready to pass out because you don't know where this is going to go now. Right? I don't want bad news. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you say, hey, Coach, I'm up here with my guy. I think I screamed real so loud outside. Uh, Chris come running out the door and say, you all right? You all right? You all right? I said, you got J2. So uh, that was pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. And they were too. Great family. You still got the shirt? Were you guys picked them up there, Coach? Yeah, I do. <laughs> hey, is this a year that your experience comes in handy? Because it seems like you've got – one or two guys in like every possible situation you can imagine in terms of fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, first year, early guys, I and mean, just everybody going through different situations. And it help you be able to kind of to tap into other your knowledge of what you've done in the past to help these guys. Yeah, it helps. You know, it really does. But I think the biggest question is that who's behind them is, is my is my is my push. Like I got to get the next guy ready. You know, I mean, because something can happen. So my push to get the young players ready as quick as possible because they never know when to be in the game. So it gives me flexibility. It gives me some chance to move the dots a little bit because they're so veteran. And, and that's been really fun. And they can set the bar for practice. Okay, we got to wrap it up with Coach. Coach, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Larry. Put Tyree.